We use which to talk about things and animals, anything that's not a person. The glass, which was on the table, is now broken, for example. Who is used to talk about people. The man who is talking is my uncle. But remember that if we use it to introduce an object, it becomes whom. The man whom I saw. Because I am the subject, I saw a man, and that is the object of my sentence. The man whom I saw. Lastly, that can be used in both cases. It's generic. So I can say the pen that I lost, the girl that's sitting next to me, the dog that I adopted. Is it on time or in time? They're not the same thing. On time means punctually, on schedule. The train arrived on time. It was a planned time. In time means early enough. We're still in time to get there, meaning we're not going to be late. If I say just in time, it means that I was very close to being late, but I still wasn't. Oh, and lastly, if I say in time you'll see, it means eventually, after some time has passed. Get in or get on. A little trick. You get on a bus, a boat, a plane, a train, basically anywhere you can stand. If you can't stand, you get in, like you get in a car, a taxi, a truck, and so on. When should we use whilst? Don't worry, whilst is just a less common, more dated and formal version of while, and it's typically used in British English. So we could say, they made breakfast while or whilst I was sleeping. It's the same thing. But actually, there is a little difference because while can also be used as a noun and a verb. Whilst can't be that. So it's, we talked for a while. I can't say whilst in this case. Same goes for, I whiled away the evening doing puzzles. Wish I could do that. <laughs> All right, whose. Not to be confused with whose, which sounds the same, but it's the contraction of who and is. And it's a totally different thing. So back to whose. It's used for possessions at the beginning of a question. For example, let's pretend you find a pen. You want to know who it belongs to. You say, whose pen is this? Is it yours? Is it theirs? Is it his? Whose is it? So at the beginning of a question. But whose can also be used in the middle of a sentence when it's a relative pronoun. For example, that's the girl whose father is an actor, meaning she has a father and he is an actor. Or um, that's the guy whose pen I just found. It's his pen. I'll give it back, I promise. <laughs> Actually, no. Common mistake, though. Arrive in, at, on. So if we're talking about a place, we arrive in if it's a country or a city. She arrived in Paris. She arrived in France. If we're talking about a specific place, then we use at. Like, uh, she arrived at the airport, at the train station, at her friend's house, and so on. When we're talking about the time, it's at for a specific hour of the day. Like, they arrived at six. In for seasons, months, and years. Like, um, she arrived in July. She arrived in summer um, in 1973. I don't know. And lastly, it's on for a specific day. Like, um, he arrived on Monday. He arrived on the 4th of May. If I were, if I was, is there a difference? Yes, there is. If I were is used when talking about a hypothetical situation. It could be a wish, something you're imagining. Like when Beyonce said, if I were a boy. If I was, on the other hand, is used when talking about something that actually happened in the past, or at least may have happened. Like, if I was rude to you, I apologize. I don't know, I may have been rude. If I was, I'm sorry. Now, with that in mind, just remember that in spoken English or even in some songs, you could hear if I was even when it should be if I were. That's because in everyday conversations, people tend to bend the rules a little bit, but it's important to know the difference. Catch, caught, seek, sought, fly, flown. Swim, 
swum, dig, dug, feed, fed, draw, drawn, weave, woven, deal, dealt. In, at, on, I get it, they're confusing. When do we use them? So let's start from at. We use at for times, like at five, at noon, at midnight, plus with the word night, it's at night. We use in for centuries, decades, years, months, seasons, plus in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. On is used for days, so it could be days of the week, like on Monday, days of the month, on the 13th, and holidays, on Christmas Day. However, in this case, if we don't use the word day, then we can also say at Christmas, meaning the whole season, Christmas time, if you will. But let's not think about it right now. It's summer, I want to go to the beach, we'll think about Christmas in a couple of months. Is it further or farther? They're both correct, but here's a quick tip to remember which one to use. If we're talking about a physical distance, we can use both interchangeably. So the beach is farther than I imagined, or I drove further north. But if we're talking about a figurative distance, then it would be more appropriate to use further. For example, we decided to take a step further in our relationship. Test your English, do at this. Complete this sentence. Luke is a five-year-old boy. Hurry, get on the bus. We're going to be late. Whose jacket is this? If I had known it, I would have told you. I've lived here for two years. How many did you get right? Pronunciation challenge, do at this. Ancient. Procedure. Colleague, epitome, height, nucleus, cord. Pronunciation challenge. Duet this with me and see if you can pronounce these words correctly. You start. Anchor. Sleuth. Benign. Yearning. Ambiguity. Luxurious. So how many did you get right? English test. Let's see if you can pass this one. Duet me and fill in the blanks. Remind me to check again. I wish I didn't have to do this. Although it was snowing, schools were open. They suggested trying it.
were very different from each other. So how did you do? Bathroom vocabulary. Duet me and see if you can name all these things in English. What is this called? That's a toothbrush. And what about this? A hand towel. And what is this thing called? That would be a comb. And this? A bathtub. That's a bathrobe. Last one. Mouthwash. I see a verb and you tell me it's past tense. Duet me. What's the past tense of sing? Sang. Feel. Felt, cast, cast, teach, taught, fly, flew, see, saw, freeze, froze, tear, Tore, read, read, spelled the same, but the pronunciation is different. Careful how you pronounce this word. It's not perseverance. I've heard a lot of talk these days about the Mars rover that's named like this. That's why I'm bringing it up. It's actually pronounced perseverance with emphasis on the V syllable, perseverance. If you prefer the British pronunciation, as usual, drop the R. Perseverance, 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 perseverance. Please don't say purchase. You're not chasing anything. It's actually pronounced purchase, purchase, with the emphasis on per, purchase. If you prefer the British pronunciation, then remember to drop the R. Purchase, purchase, purchase. Tear, tear. Lead, lead. Read, read. Wind, wind. Wound, wound. Close, close. Live, live, bow, bow, Polish, polish.